Let's consider how to calculate the internal forces in a beam, which has to do with cutting a beam at a point. To analyze the axial force, shear force, and bending moment at a given point. In this question, we are going to calculate the axial force, which is usually represented with the letter H, and we are going to calculate the shear force, usually represented with the letter V, and the bending moment usually represented with the letter M at point E. We are going to draw the free body diagram and find the reaction forces for the pin support and for the roller support. It is important to mention here that this is not the same thing as drawing the shear force diagram or the bending moment diagram which we are going to see in a separate video. Shear force and bending moment continuously vary along the length of a beam. The axial force can be compression or tension with respect to the neutral axis. Besides axial forces, Shear force produces shear stresses, represented as V, where V1 is the same thing as V2. Subsequently, bending moment produces normal stress, where M1 and M2 are equal. To solve this problem, this is pinned support and this is roller support. Step number one, draw the free body diagram. The pinned support has a horizontal force and also a vertical force acting at that point, while a roller support has only one vertical force. Also, at the middle of the 3 meters, the uniformly distributed load between A and B will become 5 multiplied by 3, which is 15 kN. And the 15 kN value will act at the center, which is 1.5 to A and 1.5 to point B. And this is step number one. Next, step number two. All the forces going up will be equal to the forces coming down. The forces that are going up are R subscript A and R subscript D respectively. Remember, you can equally use V instead of R. But in this video, we are going to use V for the internal shear forces when we cut the beam at point E. To visualize the cut surface at point E, Forces acting along the y axis represent the shear force, and the forces acting along the x axis represent the axial force, while the turning force represents the bending moment. These three internal stresses also determine the integrity of the beam when loaded. These are the forces pointing up. Next, let's consider the forces 
that are pointing down. 15 kN and 8 kN respectively are pointing down. The reaction at A plus the reaction at D is equal to 23 kN. In step 2, we still have 2 unknown. Step number 3. Forces to the right is equal to forces to the left. Forces to the right is H subscript A. However, forces to the left do not exist is zero. From step number three, we have that the horizontal force at point A is zero. Next, step number four. Clockwise moment is equal to anticlockwise moment. That is, we are going to take moment about a point. And here, we are going to consider point A. Consider this clock. If a force causes this beam to move in this direction, which is in the clockwise direction, we consider this beam to be moving in the clockwise direction. But if this force causes this beam to turn in this direction, that is, in the anticlockwise direction. Then, this beam is turning against the conventional clock direction. We say it is anticlockwise direction. But moment is force multiplied by perpendicular distance, not just distance. That is, the force must be acting perpendicular, that is 90 degrees, to the point where you are taking moment from. We are going to apply this concept in step number 4. Here, we are going to say that the summation of all the forces at point A is 0. This simply means that at point A, where we are taking our moment from. We are going to assume that the horizontal force at point A and the vertical force at point A do not exist. And now we are left with three forces, which are 15 kN force, 8 kN force, and the reaction force at point D. Let's consider the 15 kN force. And we are going to assume that the 8 kN force and the reaction force at point D do not exist at this moment. In the absence of other forces, the 15 kN force will turn this beam to move in the clockwise direction about point A. The distance between where the 15 kN force is acting to point A is 1.5 meters. The moment for the 15 kN force is 15 multiplied by 1.5 in the clockwise direction. We're going to have 15 multiplied by 1.5 in the clockwise moment. Next, we are going to consider the 8 kN force. And this time, we are going to consider that the 15 kN and the reaction force at D do not exist. In the absence of other forces, the 8 kN force will turn this beam to move in the clockwise direction, about point A. 8 kN force is acting in this direction, and the perpendicular distance to the point where we are taking moment from is 7, which is 
the summation of all the distance and the moment for the 8 kN force is 8 multiplied by 7 in the clockwise direction. We are going to add this moment to the clockwise moment. Next, we are going to consider the reaction force at point D. And we are going to assume that every other forces are constant. The reaction force at D will turn this beam to turn in the anticlockwise direction about point A. The reaction force at point D is acting along this line while the distance which is perpendicular to point A is 10 meters. We are going to have that the reaction force at point D multiply by 10 in the anticlockwise direction. We are going to add this to the anticlockwise moment. Next, we are going to make the reaction force at point D the subject. That is, 10 will move across the equal sign to divide everything here. Next, with our calculator, we're going to have divide, then at the numerator, open a bracket, 15 times 1.5, close the bracket, plus open the bracket, 8 times 7, close the bracket, and at the denominator, we have 10. We're going to press the equal sign and change this to decimal and we're going to have 7.85 kN. We have obtained the reaction force at point D and from step number 3 we equally had obtained another answer. But from step number 2 the reaction force at point A is still unknown. Having known this answer, we can find the reaction force at point A. From step number two, we have found the value of the reaction force at point A, which is 15.15 kN. Next, in step number six, we are going to redraw the free body diagram but we are going to put back the values of our reaction forces which we have obtained in step number 2, 3, 4 and 5. Next, instead of the unknown values in the free body diagram in step number 1, we are going to substitute their values in step number 6. In this step number 6, you can decide to let out 0. Next, step number 7. We are going to cut the beam into two parts at point E. You can see in step number 7, at point E, we have cut the beam into two. Now that we have cut the beam into two, the internal forces of the beam can be analyzed on both faces. The bending moments are equal. Likewise, the shear forces and the axial forces. We are not concerned with the external forces, but the external forces will help us to find the internal forces. We are going to draw the free body diagram of the left hand side of the beam. That is, we are going to be consigned with this part of the beam. And we are going to ignore the right hand side. From point E to point B is 2 meters. From point B 
to the center of the uniformly distributed load is 1.5 and from the center of the uniformly distributed load to point A is 1.5. That means we are cutting off 5 meters. And instead of solving this, we are going to be solving the left hand side of the beam, which is still step number 7. Next, in step number 8, forces going up is equal to forces coming down. From step number 7, the force that is going up is 15.15 kN. While the forces that are coming down are 15 kN and 15.15 is 15 going up. While these two forces are coming down. From step number 8, we have obtained that the shear force is 0.15 kN. This shear force is only relevant at point E. Step number 9. Forces to the right is equal to forces to the left. From step 7 free body diagram, nothing is going to the right and the axial force is also going to the right. We do not have any force that is coming to the left, hence is zero. The axial force at point E is zero kN. Next, step number 10. Clockwise moment is equal to anticlockwise moment. The summation of all the moments at point E is zero. We are going to take moment about point E. If we take moment about this point, which is point E, then the axial force and the shear force will be zero. Let's consider the 15.15 kN force. And we are going to assume that the 15 kN force and the moment does not exist. Remember, you can decide to remove this zero. In the absence of other forces, the 15.15 kN force will turn this beam in the clockwise direction about point E. The 15.15 kN is acting in this direction. However, the distance to point E is a total of 5 meters and the moment will be 15 0.15 kN multiply by 5 meters in the clockwise direction. We are going to include this value to the clockwise moment. Next, let's consider the 15 kN force. And we are going to assume that the 15.15 kN force and the moment are constant. In the absence of other forces, the 15 kN force will turn this beam in the anticlockwise direction, which is about point E. The 15 kN force is acting in this direction, and the distance to point E is 3.5 meters which is the summation of 1.5 meters plus 2 meters and the moment is 15 kN force multiplied by 3.5 meters in the anticlockwise direction. This value will be added to the anticlockwise moment. Next, 
we are going to consider the moment and we are going to assume that every other force is constant. In the absence of other forces, this moment is going to turn about point E in the anticlockwise direction. We are going to add this moment to the anticlockwise moment. Next, we are going to make the bending moment at point E the subject. And we are going to have that the bending moment at point E is 23.25 kN per meters. We have obtained the answer for the bending moment at point E and also we have obtained the value for the axial force. Likewise, we have obtained the value for the shear force at point E. Hence, we are going to go back to step number 7. We are going to replace all the values for the internal forces, for the axial force, for the shear force, and for the bending moment, which are relevant only to point E on the beam. And we are done. If this video was helpful, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. To locate and assess other helpful videos, follow the link on the screen. I will see you in the next video lesson.